Hey everyone, welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. This uh, Friday afternoon, we are here with Paper House. Welcome, you guys. Hey. Um, your new record, debut record, actually, long player anyway, is called Are These the Questions That We Need to Ask? And it is out today via uh, Misery Records. And you're going to play some songs from that record for us. Uh, so tell us about the first one. Uh, first one's called Go Cozy. It's the second song on the album. Cool. Whenever you're ready. Let's do it. <laughs>
Um, so again, uh, for anyone tuning in, the new record is called Are These the Questions That We Need to Ask? Which, uh, for fear of having you guys do my job, um, I am wondering what are those questions that we should be asking? Um, that's a great question, actually. <laughs> um, we live in strange and pretty uncertain times. I think no matter what your point of view is on the world or our society, it's uh, definitely uncertain. and. I think we focus a lot on trying to uncover conclusions on how to fix, uh, fix things based on schemes and ideas that we already have thrown at us instead of maybe trying to think of new ways to approach things. And um, that album title and really these songs are just about trying to find fresh and healthy and thoughtful ways to approach the way we treat each other, um, the way we live in this world. Uh, it's just trying to get back to basics a little bit on how we approach our lives. And, and it was for me, at least lyrically, and I think you know, the lyrics Matt wrote as well on this record, um, a lot of that was personal therapy and trying to get more grounded. Totally, totally. Well, you're a DC band, so yeah. I mean, how pervasive is it for you, like right in the center of it all? Just uh, in day-to-day -day life. It's impossible to ignore. Yeah. I mean, just being in a coffee shop and just that's what people are talking about. I, I grew up in the area. Everyone in the band actually grew up in the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fourth generation from D.C., from the area at least. Um, and I think there's no avoiding it. Um, none of my family is in politics, but um, it's just it's always been there a little bit. Yeah. What's it been like for you guys on the road then? You know, coming from like, you know, living in this like insane bubble in a way yeah, of absolutely. like in the political, you know, DC machine and then like going out and taking these songs like on the road. Like how, how have you guys felt? How, how have crowds like reacted to it? Does it like resonate with them or is it, does it seem like almost foreign in a way? No, people seem to be listening. I mean, that's what I look for most. Yeah. It's always great when people are dancing. Um, that always feels good too, but, uh, People are, at the very least, have been really listening. You can tell, and um, it is nice actually going to other cities that aren't as wrapped up in what's going on. Um, you know, you go to a show in D.C. A lot of times, you the people there work jobs at the State Department or at a nonprofit, or it's just uh, pick your think tank. Yeah. So actually, for <laughs> us, it's kind of nice to get out and not be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just for a little bit. A little totally. Break. Well, tell us about the next song you're going to play. Um, so I think we're going to do Told You What to Say. Okay. Um, so this song, uh, I took a trip to Columbia, uh, and uh, a woman I was dating at the time, her sister was living down there, went to visit uh, for a bunch of reasons. And um, I learned a lot about the war down there, and it became, became pretty obsessed with learning about what happened and kind of realized, well, there were no good sides there were no it's not uh every every side was trying to paint a picture but uh so really it's about the song is about authoritarian ideas and how people can respond to them um we wrote this before i think anyone really thought trump was a, a thing so it, it really ended up being insane playing the song we were recording this song while trump was becoming an actual thing that people weren't just making fun of and like oh this guy is actually 
going to get the nomination and then obviously um so uh it actually wasn't about people have been asking about this song when they hear the lyrics but yeah. it's it wasn't originally about that but the i guess the point is these ideas are universal it can happen mm-hmm. anywhere and we all need to be thoughtful and attentive so that's what the song's about whenever you're ready
little bit more about DC in another context. Um, okay. There's, I from what I hear, um, there's a kind of cool burgeoning DIY scene, and you guys are like at the pinnacle of it. Like dudes from Fugazi dig your band. Um, yeah. So I hear anyway. <laughs> um, and well, and I read that um, like a house, there's like a house venue. Um, yeah. That was like I don't know. Uh, on the pilot of HGTV's DC Flippers. Oh, okay. That is true. So, um, what is it, I mean, what is this community like these days? I feel like the last time DC um, was, like, at the center of the conversation of, like, music, it was in the 80s and hardcore and punk and that kind of stuff. So, makes, like, tell us about it When it makes sense to think about that music and what was going on politically at the time, that music was um, pretty necessary. Yeah. Um, I think that we are, uh, you know, there's so many people who have been doing this for decades. We're just another thing that has helped push it forward. Uh, house shows have been going on in DC since the early 80s, out of, of necessity. No one would book punk at these yeah. clubs, right? Um, so the way I feel about it is simply uh, we're just trying to help have good, sustainable shows, help smaller bands from out of town who are really good but maybe don't have a name for themselves yet get good shows where people who actually care will be there. and. You know, same for the locals in D.C. Uh, we had a house venue for a lot of years in the Petworth neighborhood called the Paper House. S- uh, named, it out of, named it out of sheer laziness, and then it wait, became so a thing. Wait, so which came first, the band the name band. or the house? The band was around okay. for a long time, and, and most of the members of the band lived at the house at the time, so uh, which is why we called it. Okay. Uh, and we've actually restarted, so we're doing shows again. Uh, the, the house that was on the, the pilot of D.C. <laughs> Flippers uh, is now a... You know. Wait a second. Maybe I can. Okay, so I found out, like, I just got back from a long tour, and then I find out we have to move, and I, I didn't clean. I didn't clean for like two, three months. The basement was a total fucking mess. And uh, you can say it. It's chill. Oh sweet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and they got it documented, and I forgot that they were showing up that day. I should have cleaned a little bit. So basically, it's what my you're most saying embarrassing moment. is that it's all record. your fault. Well, That's just like a really interesting tidbit for like a band who has like such varying kind of like influences and styles of like, you know, with like the fuzz and the looping and like, yeah, it's like, oh, but you're on this like reality TV show, or at least your house is. Yeah, it, was, it was a surreal thing. Surreal is the word for it. It was pretty weird. But, you know, the truth is um, it was almost a blessing. You know, we got we had something so good for so long. At that house, it was really like a uh, a beautiful community hub where we all met a lot of people and you know have a little family through that spot. But in a way, you know, those that you can't rely on that kind of stuff forever, and you have to keep fresh. And me and Matt have started doing shows in other places under a, with a group called DC DIT, and so it ended up forcing us to start doing more shows in other places and reaching new people, and you know, just kind of expanding it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we've got one more for us today. Uh, tell us about the last song you're going to play. Uh, guys are going to do Na Na Na. Um, again, kind of striking at the theme. I mean, the, the lyric of are these the questions that we need to ask, we, you know, that ended up being the album title. So I think most of what I said earlier about the album kind of stands. This was, at least lyrically for me, the kind of the song that kick-started where we were going. Though... Um, I guess the song has a little bit of a different feel than some of the other songs on the record. We, we like a, an eclectic, contrasting, diverse album. Cool. Most of our favorites are like that, so that's what we're going <laughs> to exactly. do, too. Exactly. So, yeah, this is Na Na Na.
Thanks, dudes. Thanks so much. Um, so, um, album release party tonight at Alphaville here in Brooklyn. Well, here in New York, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Uh, we are in Manhattan. Let's Indeed. be specific. Um, yeah, and then you guys are um, on tour through the rest of the month into November. And for anyone in New York, um, tune in right now. If you can't make the show tonight, you're back in Brooklyn in December. Yep. Um, thank you guys so much, Paper House, for being here with us Thanks today. Thanks for having us.